All right, this is a home interview in Smithtown, New York. It is the 7th of August, 2007, approximately 2 p.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Edward Lockley, date of birth, 10-16-32. And uh, where were you born? Brooklyn, New York. All right. What was your educational background prior to entering service? Uh, I was the year of college before my Navy. Okay. Um, did you enlist or were you drafted? I was enlisted. Why did you decide to enlist? I just thought it was the thing to do at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And what time was that? When was that? About 52. Okay. Um, why did you pick the Navy? I don't know. I guess I like the idea of uh, being on a ship rather than quite honestly being maybe uh, in, a, in a foxhole someplace. I thought it would be a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. alive over there. Okay. Where did you go for your basic training? Uh, Bainbridge, Maryland. What was it like there? Uh, it was okay. It was, it was, I, had, I had no problem. I, I do remember the, the fir first week, I still remember vividly, uh, some of the men were complaining how difficult it was, you know, the, you know, the discipline that they're looking for. But I had a disciplinarian for father, and I went to a Catholic high school with, with brothers who, I mean, it, it was discipline there. Mm -hmm. So to me, this was, it was very easy. I had no problem. I mean, it didn't, it, I didn't fall over, but I understood where they were coming from. Mm -hmm. so I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I had no problem adjusting to the who came. How long was your basic? Uh, I think it was 12 weeks, I think, something like that. Some, some Did you go for any specialized training after that? Yeah, I went to radar school. Where was that? Uh, in uh, this was Norfolk, Virginia. How long were you there? Gosh, a couple of months anyway. Mm -hmm. I'd say two or three months. What things did you learn? Well, I learned how to, the main thing was uh, how to operate a radar. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to, uh, you know, we learned things like, you know, tracking planes. And I, I never had to learn how to run backwards. <coughs> but when you're in the service and, you, and you're plotting let's say planes moving in, you have to be behind the board and, and you're riding backwards. Mm -hmm. So I really learned that, but there were other things too. I, you know, I can't, basic electricity. Mm -hmm. okay. But mostly it was radar operation. So right after you left uh, Norfolk, where did you go? No, then I was assigned to the USS New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I guess that was after three, three months. So I probably went on to New Jersey for three and a half years. You like the New Jersey? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I went back. I think I told you, I went back with my grandkids. Uh, actually, I went twice. Once with my wife, and then I took my three grandchildren, and we stayed overnight. And that was a thrill for them. And I went to places that I'd never been on board the ship. You know, I went to officers' country. Mm -hmm. I'm listed, man. I never went to at the admiral's quarters or the captain's quarters or, you know, or the ward room. Mm -hmm. But it was great. And then we were able to uh, the CIC. When I was on board the ship, it was called Combat Information Center. Now, now it's called Combat Engagement Center. But anyway, it was kind of off limits, but because I had been on the ship, they said, well, we'll take you down and below decks and they did it. So we took a couple of pictures of the, of the area. I thought it was a bigger room until I got there now. I said, geez, this was an awful small area. You know, that was 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. I had forgotten the size of it. But anyway, it was, it was a great experience. The kids loved it. I mean, it, was, it, was, it was really experience. And, and the funny thing is, I, uh, we're in the chow line, in the chow line. And I look up on the wall, and there's a menu. And I said to the kids, look at the menu. Did you see the, 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 the sale there pretty well? Look at that. And fresh ham. And honest to God, this is the truth. I looked at the date, April something, 1953. That's when I was humble with the ship. At that so it was my menu. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't believe it. Here I am, and they still got the menu. They, they were just wanted to show mm -hmm. the fellas what it was like, you know, what people were like. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the kids got a big kick out of it. They, they enjoyed it. And I, and I enjoyed it, too. I thought it was, it was quite, a, quite an experience. And I have a, I think I, I gave you a copy of the diary, I guess, yes, right? Yes, yes, I have the, that. That they, they did, but they, they, did, they took the diary and put it in the museum. I mean, that's a copy. Mm -hmm. I gave them the book, and, and, and they've got that in now, and, and you see. But I, I don't have a big ego, but the first time I went down there and I saw it, they had the, 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 the diary open, and they said, yeah, this is by one of the sailors on board the ship. So I called the museum director and said, you know, can't you give me at least the credit? I, I mean, my name is in the book. 
please give me the credit for the damn thing so that they, they put my name on it now anyway. They're looking for me by, by my posterity. <laughs> my grandkids will see it anyway. So that, it's at, at the museum where the, the New Jersey is? Uh, yeah, the, the museum is right on board the ship. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, were you allowed to keep a diary or? or yeah, no one ever objected to it. I mean, I, I mean, it was well, you know, well, people knew that I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I went around up to the office and knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But I never, well, I don't know if you have a chance to even read it. I, I looked through it. There was nothing in there that was uh, any damaging. Mm -hmm. there, there was some interesting thing, because it's so funny. I think I told you, I, thought, I think I sent you copies to the photographs when I, the story about the book, you know, finding it. Yes. Well, I went back into the diary, I found a date in 1953 where they came in and took the photos, but I never thought anything of it. You know, I wrote it down, the photographers came in, took the photographs, okay, and put it away, and then I pull the book out and I tell you know, the story and how I found those pictures. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, we'll add that on the tape. <coughs> okay. Okay. Um, what was life like on the, on the New Jersey? Uh, it was nice, it was good. I mean, you know, it was, you, know, you had to get used to, you know, Beverly get up and then and when they told you to get up, it, it, it was it was it was fun. I mean, we uh, I enjoyed the time in service. I never I never objected to. It. Uh, when we were in Korea, the, the hours were, sh were short, and as you were like maybe four on four off. But when you're back in the peacetime, then it was you know you maybe stood a watch for a couple of hours, and then you were off for six hours, and that was mm -hmm. a lot easier. But, but during the, the combat time, there was a little bit you know four on four off kind of. Thing. But you get used to it, and you, and you learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. And and I had I had. No the only thing I didn't like about the, the one thing I had to do on board ship, which I didn't like to do, and I only did it once, and I said you can put me in the brig after this, is that, to give you an idea, they, we have, they have a radar antenna, and that antenna is at the, at the top of this mast. And to give you an idea of the height, when the ship went under the Brooklyn Bridge, you had to take that antenna off. So you can get an idea of the height, about 140 feet. In fact, there's a picture of the Brooklyn Bridge over there. And you can see, get an idea of, uh, in, when they're going underneath there, it's about 130, 140 feet. Mm -hmm. And we had, a, had to go up there and paint that. I went there once, I said, never again. I don't care what you do to me, but I'm not going up there. I was so scared. I mean, I, I had a paintbrush in the hand and I wrapped the arm around <laughs> the paint. I was so scared. I said, never again. You, you can do anything you want to me, but I'm not going up there. And I never did. <laughs> once was enough, I guess. I think we got enough. Now, you talked about meals. What were daily meals like? Oh, they were really uh, uh, very, very good. In fact, the, the best time for me was when, uh, near the end of my service, I was a first-class petty officer, and we had our own mess, our own mess hall. And they would come out for breakfast, and they'd have to bring a big rash of eggs and bacon. I mean, I mean you had, you, 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 I, I ate better there than I ate at home. And, and, and on holidays, like Christmas and Thanksgiving, I wouldn't tell my mother this, but sometimes it was better to stay on board the ship. <laughs> the food was really, I mean, the Navy fed you. you know, see, also the Navy gets the gravy and, and the Army gets the beans. Mm -hmm. I guess that's about the way it goes, too. Mm -hmm. But we ate very well. And the food was excellent. I mean, I, could have, I learned to eat things that I never ate before. I mean, I learned to eat broccoli and cow. I never ate that stuff at home. But it's the old story. When you're on board ship, you eat that, but you don't eat anything later on. You know, you mm -hmm. stop, so you learn. Mm -hmm. You learn to eat, that's all. So now, when you first went on the ship, um, where did it go on the cruise? Did it go right to Korea? Or? No, no, no. Let's see, I was 52, I got on board. We didn't go to Korea until, uh, uh, I guess it was March or April of 53. So we took cruises probably to, I know we went down to Guantanamo. And we did uh, fire drills, and, uh, not fire drills, but fire bombardment drills in Vallegas, which is a little island of Puerto Rico. We did that. Then we floated around the, in the Caribbean and until our time came in early '53, and they sent us over to Korea. Mm -hmm. At that time, there were uh, there were four battleships were still in existence: the Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, and New Jersey. The Missouri was over there. It was a six-month tour, so they rotated the ships out. And we we we, uh, we relieved in Missouri. Did you? Um <laughs> get to go off, off the ship, not onto the. Uh, it, 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 early part of it? Yeah. Or, or any time. Or any time. Oh, or many time. I mean, we were in, when we were in Japan, we went to Selfie, the cruise go went to Tokyo. I mean, I had a Mediterranean cruise in 55. So I saw a lot. 
Mm -hmm. I wasn't one thing about the ship. It wasn't as you were saying other. It's welded to the dock. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. One of the things experiences I remember with the with being in New Jersey, we were, we were stationed in Norfolk. Anytime there was a hurricane, or Cape Hatteras, out we went. They didn't want us tied up in the dock, so you had to go out mm -hmm. and, 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 and fight the hurricane. You say, well, geez, it's a big ship, and people would get sick. I never got sick, but you have to visualize this is a large ship, and, and it's, it, it does this. It rolls, mm -hmm. and it's 108 feet of beam, and it, and it rolls. And we used to watch the destroyers, and they went like this. <laughs> we rolled like that, but they always went out to the Cape to fight it out there mm -hmm. rather than staying in shore. But, but as far as we were liberty, we went, we went to all places. But we went, I'm trying to think back in, in Cuba. I guess we went to Havana, but that was back, you see, before when Batista mm -hmm. was there. You know, Castro was mm -hmm. uh, even even before it. That's right. But, but uh, I'm maybe in France. I mean, we, I went to a lot of places that uh, I used to tease my wife. I said, I've been there. She said, yeah, well, I haven't. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you uh, go into Korea? Yes, I went into Pusan uh, uh, on Liberty actually, mm -hmm. uh, and met up with a friend of mine who was a neighbor, who was in the army. He was in grades registration, and he, and he told me that these eerie stories about he had to go up into the front lines, you know, after a battle, you know, and then he had to claim the body. Like that. Mm -hmm. But then, but I do remember seeing a, a rock army camp. I still remember vividly in my mind. I remember this uh, uh, recording career. Uh, officer had a swagger stick and he was beating one of his his troops I said that would never go in an American army to take the stick away from but uh, the, the Koreans I guess look at things a little bit uh, mm -hmm. different than we look at mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but that's all that's the inference and that was in the southern part mm -hmm. of, of, uh, as far as the ship is concerned they went up as close to, to the um, place called Changjin that was the furthest point north on the Korean coast and we're in the once on harbor quite a few times. Well, the diary can be mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, what were most of your missions? Uh, in Korea? Yes. Yeah, so uh, gu gunfire support, uh, mostly for the, uh, on the East Coast. I can't remember, the, the Rock Army, the Republic of Korea was on the East Coast. The Americans were a little further in. And we were calling for, for, for gunfire support. Mm -hmm. That's what we did most mm -hmm. of the time. You know, going for gun strike and then then go back out again. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to watch uh, the, uh, we used to do fire for harassment too. So they would fire just one 16 inch shell. The thing that was interesting about that, if you were up on the bridge and as a radar man, there were times when you had to be up on the bridge too. Mm -hmm. And you'd be, you were able to watch the shell hit the doctrine point. You could actually see it mm -hmm. go and then it would drop and then you'd, then you'd see the thing. You know. But you know, the big shell, yeah. you know, it's as tall yeah. as mine. Mm -hmm. I'm not very tall, but it's about five foot high. But it was interesting to watch that. And anything, the other interesting thing I remember was a nine gun salvo. When that went off, let me tell you, you know, you could just smoke in it, you know, the ship didn't move because the recoil, their rifles, mm -hmm. the recoil, so the ship kind of pretty much stationary. But it's an interesting thing to see them fire off nine guns like that. You know, big, big, big gun. And we had these uh, five inch 38 guns. We used to be, they used to do a lot of practice uh, firing at these. Uh, Planes are carrying you know, these commercial shoots. Oh yes, yeah. Well, they couldn't hit beans anyway. And at that time, it was it was jets. When you couldn't hit a jet with a, you're not, in today's mm -hmm. technology is different. But back then, with us, I mean, you could hit the port side of a barn with those things. But it was uh, it was interesting uh, ex experience anyway. With uh, being on radar, did you ever have any times that uh, that MIGs came near you or? Uh, well, yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, you know, it's hard to say, remember. I, you know, we, we used to call them bogeys. Bogeys, right? Yes. And uh, I, I, I know that we had some unidentified planes, and whether they were, I, I'm not going to sit here and make up a story mm -hmm. that they were mixed, I don't really know. I don't remember back then. Mm -hmm. They were unidentified. Whether they turned out to be friend or foe, I don't remember. But initially, when you find somebody, you know, you say it's a bogey, such and such, and such and such a place. It, it is. The funny thing is, one of these heights, I'm on a, a midshipman cruise in 55. I don't know how I got into this thing, but I was teaching torpedo problems to these midshipmen out of Annapolis. And I said, you know, I got, I got this job because somebody said I could probably handle it. But I said, you know, we don't fire torpedoes on a battleship. You know, it's a destroyer or, or a PT boat. Mm -hmm. 
But they said, well, you know, how, you, know you understand that, that, that I can't, and, and don't ask me what it was I was doing, but we, we, it was on a plotting board, and we had to set take things up, and, and uh, we had to teach it, of course, we took a midshipman crew, we were midshipmen every year, mm -hmm. you should probably know this, right? every, every summer they, they take right, off on yes. some ship, you know, yeah. on different ships, I guess, and we had a group of them on board. But I got the job of training, I was a training petty officer, so I had to teach these kids torpedo problems. This is ridiculous. I said, it's ridiculous, but this is the Navy, so I, I understand <laughs> it's way things go. Now, did, when you went in for gun support uh, along the coast, were you ever fired upon? Yes, yeah, uh, once or twice. I, I don't, I don't, we, we may have gotten some shrapnel on it, but there was nobody, there's no wounded. Nobody ever, no, in that particular crew, no one got wounded. I don't remember anybody getting wounded. Now you said when you got off uh, Korea, um, your schedule changed. Where you had what four on, four off? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we went, what, what was the normal schedule? I don't. You know, I said it was probably four on again, but maybe it was like six or eight or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, it was a lot, a lot different. But during the during the Korean time, it was, it was uh, you were really on a lot. Not more than you were off. Because it's pretty much, especially when you're in general quarters, which is, you know, when you're in action, then it's pretty regular, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they, they want to give you enough time to sleep, but, in, but they still want to have it, have you out there. Mm -hmm. That's the way it was. During the peacetime, you know, four on, I guess, eight or something. Now, did you ever establish any close friendships? Oh, yeah. Out of there? Yeah, sure. I, 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 I got on the internet once to put my name on the internet to anybody on board that she was just New Jersey and such. And I got a call back and found out the guy was in my division and I looked on the IBE book, I got the yearbook. I looked to see there he was, you know, we had, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say we were great buddies, but we knew each other quite Because mm -hmm. yeah, it's a small small division, maybe we had, I don't know, 20, 25 people we get to know everybody anyway. But, yeah, did you ever have any USO shows that you attended at all? Or? I'm sorry. USO <laughs> shows. Uh, no, I, I do remember the, U, the one of the best USOs that I, that I can remember. I didn't go to any show. But I thought one of it was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I went to school <coughs> for electronic communication countermeasure mm -hmm. and I went to school in Great Lakes. And I spent some time in between Chicago, because great, physically Great Lake Tear is between Milwaukee and mm -hmm. Chicago. Anyway, we spent some time in Milwaukee. Great town, I remember that. People were terrific. Lots of beer. <laughs> and the USO was tremendous. I mean, they 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 really took care of the city. You know, they had some places you want to have dinner in such and such a place. You know, they had the names of people who were good. They were very, very good. That USO stands out of my mind. I didn't have any shows like, you know, the mm -hmm. Bob Over. Right. I never right. had anything like that. Mm -hmm. We never had anything like mm -hmm. that. What were some of the things you did while you were on Liberty in like Japan or Korea? Well, in, in, in Japan, I guess I, 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 I toured the, the, the city as much as I could see. I don't remember a heck of a lot of what I had seen over there. And you know, typical sailors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you told me if, if something like in Europe, it's a little different. I mean, there I went, I went on a lot of tours in uh, Greece and Parthenon. Rome, you know, and the, but but in Japan it wasn't wasn't too much. We didn't really have that much time to do anything anyway. We went to Tokyo several times, big city, you know. And other than that, Korea was nothing. I mean, Pusan, you know, nothing left. Mm -hmm. so I, I didn't. I don't go. I'm not. I never went away with any kind of great memories of Korea. Nothing. You know, like, what nice place to visit, but I don't want to stay there, I guess. That was back then. I mean, things were probably different today. Mm -hmm. Back then, in 53, it didn't mean much to me anyway. So that's about it, really. So you enjoyed your European cruises? Though. Yeah, the European, like, because then I was able to see more, you know, I mean, I, like I guess I went to Rome, I mean, the Colosseum, you know, the Vatican, and we had an audience with the Pope, I mean, not one-on-one. -on -one, mm -hmm. And then we went to, to Greece and Spain, Barcelona, uh, Istanbul. Uh, Lisbon. 
Uh, in England, in time in England, which, which I like, because I'm, I'm an American, but I've had my Lockleys in English surname. Mm -hmm. And not that I have any relatives. Well, my grandfather came from London, but I don't know of any relatives over there. But anyway, I like, I, like, I guess I like that I can speak the language too. Mm -hmm. yeah. At least some of them. The Cockneys I didn't understand. <laughs> the others I did. You know. the others I did. Yeah, are there any other stories or incidences that you recall that you want to relate? I can't think of anything at the moment. They don't have to be when you look in Saratoga. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I can't think of anything else. Okay. Now you had some photographs? Oh, yeah. Well, these are photos that I took out of a book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Books. There are two books. Two books. Right. One I found in a bookstore in Fort Worth, Texas. And the other book I found when I went to, to Camden, that's where the New Jersey is mm -hmm. it's tied up. This, this is the picture of what's, what prompted me in the book, you know, when I saw the book, this is the New Jersey. And, I, and, and my brother was said, you know, why don't you get the book? I said, I don't need the book. And then I found out when I opened it up, there it was. So here's, here's the first picture. Mm -hmm, yeah, I, I think it's right there. Well, and the funny yeah. thing about it, like I said, when I pulled the book down, I'm looking at it with my brother-in-law. I said, she's, he bought that? That looks like me. This is what it says. It's your name is right there. I said, holy mackerel. I didn't remember that. This is a good picture. That was 1953. Then when I took the book home, then I saw the book on, on the, in, in the top bunk. See? Mm -hmm. See, there are two. Oh, yeah. And, and just as a matter of interest now, uh, when I was on board the ship, we had about 3,300 people on board. By the time she was decommissioned, and, and at this moment in Camden, they, they only had about 2,000. So they got rid of the bunks like this. Not, not, now they have, like, you know, I call them coffins. Yeah. They're not just, you know, pull, pull them out of the way. They're, and whenever we were there, I couldn't sleep in the deck. Thing. I had to sleep on the deck. I felt like I was in a car. I was too confined. Mm -hmm. so they don't, but again, they, the technology changed. They took out some of the, what we used to have 40 millimeter mounts on here. Like I said, you couldn't hit a bomb. You couldn't, you, they were never effective against a jet. So they got rid of them, and then they had the Tomahawk missiles and the Gatling guns. So they needed less men. So they only, mm -hmm. had, they only had about 2,000 men on board the uh, The funny thing is about this picture, here's the other picture, sorry about that, is when you went on the internet for the Philip USS New Jersey, that picture used to come up. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Holy mackerel. They, they, they say everybody, had, and then I pulled this out. That's the date I was telling you about. Oh, yes, okay. You know, when, I, when I wrote it down, the photographer came in. So that's you in the top bunk? Yes, that's me. Yeah. Now, w when you went back with your uh, grandkids, yes. uh, were you able to find where you actually stayed when you were? Uh, uh, not, no, I couldn't find, no, I, could, I couldn't find the, uh, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't, I couldn't find the, the room where, where, where those bunks were. Mm -hmm. The only thing I was able to take them down was where I worked. Where, where, no, where this picture was taken. Oh, okay. He's able to take it down there. And that, and that was still the same? Uh, well, you know, there was dismantled things. Yeah. You know, they had a plotting board up, and, and, and they had they did have a radar interceptor there. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, in, in, during the uh, Vietnam and, and what have you, they, they brought the Combat Information Center when I was on board was, I think, fourth deck below. By the time they got into Vietnam, they brought it up, excuse me, on the main deck. Excuse me. What year was this photograph taken? Do you recall that? Uh, 53. 1953. 1953. Okay. Now, um, during the time you were on the ship, uh, was the time the services started to be integrated? Were there blacks who were among the crew besides the the mess crew yes we we had uh we had one of it was a photographer's mate but i'm telling you in 1953 there was still uh, a feeling that separate the whites from the uh, from the blacks and that was from the, the southern group i mean there was still 
segregation, mm -hmm. no, no question about it. In fact, the, the youngster had to, well, I was young too, but he, he stayed, being a Yankee, it's got, it, that's the way to kind of set it up the ship too, the way you were, the, the men in those, those bunks, they were all Yankees, mm -hmm. you know, from New England or, you know, from upstate New York or what have you. <coughs> but the, the Southerners were really, you know, they, they brought up that, you know, that's mm -hmm. the way they thought mm -hmm. back then, and that's the way, I, mean, I consider my experiences vividly in, in Norfolk, Virginia, <coughs> one time, when I was on a bus, got on the bus, and the seats in the front were taken. Any more? I want to get this finished this way. You guys see me do other things. You got other interviews? The other thing? Um, you're the last one today. Oh, okay. Uh, getting back to the, the experience that I remember vividly, the bus was crowded in the front, but it was empty in the back. It was empty. And I went to the back to sit down. And the God is my judge. The bus driver slammed the brakes on and said, "Hey, why are you up front? He says, There's no seats. He says, I don't give a damn. But you're going to stand. You can't sit back." There. That's the way things were in the fifties. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember taking, at the time, we didn't, we didn't have the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel at that point in time. So you took a ferry across the Chesapeake Beach, I guess. Mm -hmm. And in there, you know, you had the water fountains colored in white, and the, and, the, and the blacks were on the lower deck, and the whites had to go on the upper deck. The segregation was uh, very, very pronounced. Mm -hmm. you know? Back when we were on Liberty in Norfolk, we were told never to go into the uh, black areas. If you went in there, you could end up getting a court martial. That's the way thinking was back then. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. So even on the ship, though, even though you were supposed to be integrated, it really wasn't. Uh, no, not really. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, everybody had a job to do. This youngster had a job to do. But as far as uh, socializing, the, uh, the Southerners predominantly just didn't know what to do. They didn't do it. He says he's, he's black, so he belongs with the Yankees. That's the way they looked at things. Was most of the, the uh, mess staff black? Uh, I don't remember that. Okay, I don't curious. remember that, to tell you the truth. No, I would say no. Mm -hmm. I would say no. Okay. When were you discharged? 56, February 56. Mm -hmm. Did you make use of the GI Bill? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, in fact, I look back now that it, I, I didn't use it properly the way it should have. Before I went to the Navy, I went to city. I was a student at City College in New York, mm -hmm. and that was a free school, free tuition. When I was getting ready to go out of the service, I, went, I knew I was going to go back to college, and I reapplied to see if I could go back. And they said, "Yeah, you can come back." When I got out, I said, "Okay, I'm going to get married. I want to be going to day school." My wife got pregnant, so I can't do that. So I don't have to go to school at night. But I can't do so I had a choice: I could go back to City College in New York. Or I could go, if I wanted to, but use the government money to go to Brooklyn Poly. And not that I thought Brooklyn Poly was much better than City College, I just thought it was even more convenient for me. But the mistake that I made in a way was that I could have gone back to City College for free and still got the GI Bill, and, but they didn't care what you did with them. They gave you the money, it was a general allowance. Okay? But I don't regret going to Poly, but I, I could have gone to a school engineering school, which is just as good as, as Brooklyn Poly. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yes, to answer your question, I did use the GI Bill. Did you join any veterans organizations? No, I, I, I never got in, into that. I, I, I don't know, I can't tell you why not. I just never did. I just, mm -hmm. I was never much of a joiner in something like that. And, and quite honestly, I, I'm telling you this because you're asking me a question. When I got into, when I, when I get into something, I, I get into it. So I went to school at night and I got my bachelor's degree. And then after that I said, I need more education. So I went out and I got a master's in, in, in management from Poly, Brooklyn Poly. Then I worked for Public Works. So I said, well, I'll get a degree in public administration. Keep, just keep going. Then if I got that, I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm working on a lot of structures. And I don't have a master's in civil engineering, so I said, let me go back and get that. So my wife used to go crazy. When are you ever going to get done? <laughs> so when I got done with, the, with the, uh, the master's in civil engineering, the dean of the school says, well, what's next? He says, what do you mean, what's next? I'm, I'm 62 years old. I'm 60. 
So I've had it. You know, I mean, I, I don't need any more education. I mean, I, I have enough. I, I, I like school. I enjoy it. I enjoy expanding my mouth. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Yeah, you should go back to go to the doctor. So I went back to the doctor. But at that point in time, my wife says, I've had enough. <laughs> and I'm only telling you this because this is what, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I go into it and I just keep keep going and going. But I, I, am I going to school now? No. <laughs> All I'm doing is I'm fishing and playing tennis. <laughs> I had enough. Um, did you ever stay in contact with anyone? I, I, we already kind of talked about J this. Just that one fellow we, uh, that I was telling you about that I met mm -hmm. through the internet, over the internet. He, we talked on the phone with us several times, but I haven't seen anybody pay the Okay. Um, how do you think your time in service changed or had an effect on your life? Uh, it's really hard to say. I, uh, maybe it, 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 it got to a point that before I went into the service, I was kind of like, you know, what am I doing? Where am I going? What's happening? I think when I got out of service, you know, that I, so, you know, you, you got to get something to go in the mind and, and get a plan and s stick to it. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in the service, too. I, I learned that uh, I was never a great test taker, but if you got me into the program, I would study like hell. I mean, I was not a genius by the long shot, but I was the type of person that once I got into it, I went at it. Like when mm -hmm. I, I mean, again, I didn't become a first class petty officer at the time. That, that doesn't happen too often in the service. That doesn't mean I'm brilliant. It means that when the opportunity came and I, I would sit down and I would, I would study and prepare myself for the examinations. I do remember one time, one of the uh, uh, positions I was a radar in third class. First time I became a petty officer. Well, three or four of us at the same time had pretty much the same grades. And somebody decided that they thought there was cheating on us. So they held us back, wouldn't give us the rating until they investigated. And that took like three months. And they found out, well, there was no collusion. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get any back pay. Mm -hmm. They still kept us up to, the, you know. But anyway, that was the way. I, and so because of that, I learned to, you know, get it straight, get to the, you know, plan on what you want to do, and go do it. You know, don't feel mm -hmm. The attitude back when I quit college, Hey, you guys are making $100 a week in 1950. Ooh, that's a lot of money. Today, obviously, that's not even the day. And I was paid some places, you know. But at any rate, uh, I told I got out of school. I mean, we didn't have the wherewithal of the, of the drive or the ambition. As I said, most of my friends were working and making money, and I wasn't. Anyway, but I learned, the Navy taught me, you know, get your act together. All right, well, thank you very much for the interview. Oh, okay, fine.